the mouth of the Miami River. At the mouth of the Miami River. Ah, second time I've been here uh, in the last year or so. Don't come down here very often. What I love the most about the river is the barges leaving for Haiti and uh, the Bahamas and the DR just stacked with bicycles, 500, 700 bicycles, ranging from junkers to just Chinelli's and you know multiple thousands of dollars bicycles. Also the ones that leave with uh, mattresses just stack. They get they get redone apparently in the Dominican Republic. Uh, they get redone and then they get shipped back. Not so much the United States, but to the other third world countries where they sell them for uh, what's considered a fair amount of money. Considering they're getting them for nothing, they're just throwing away mattresses. So mattresses and bicycles, and I think this is also one of the most interesting places for smuggling all kinds of things: illegal immigrants, illegal drugs, uh, illegals of every kind. Miami River is pretty interesting. Estou aqui agora no Castelinho e a gente vai adentrar nesse mundo onde é um mundo de muitas histórias, histórias de assassinato no passado, histórias é, de abandono e um abandono que vem depois com pessoas da rua morando nesse lugar deixado pelo tempo. In English? I'm here at this castle. And uh, this place, uh, in, the, in the past, uh, lived uh, one family uh, which uh, have an, an assassination is history. And uh, this place abandoned uh, after transformed in a place that uh, uh, people in the street live here. And uh, this is uh, a place There are a lo lot of histories. Um, como que você se chama? Luiz Augusto dos Santos. Luiz, conta para mim, conta para nós o que, que aconteceu hoje com você. Aconteceu que o tal do Rapa da Prefeitura, que é mandado pelo seu Serra, veio para tomar nossas carroças. Porra, nós ganha pão. Eu acho que eles estão assaltando a gente. Está assaltando. Mas não deu uma oportunidade, não mandou um aviso, nem nada de nada. Não deu uma oportunidade. Veio tomando. Está assaltando a gente. Sabe? Meu ganha-pão. Porra, estou puxando carroça. Vou mostrar aqui minha mão para vocês. Sabe? Ó. Oh. O irmão de trabalhador trabalha muito. Todo tipo de trabalho eu pego.
So this is where the U.S.-Mexico border terminates in the Pacific Ocean. I suppose I know this border well. I've been crossing it all my life. One of the earliest things I have from my childhood is this photograph that was taken in the streets of Tijuana. They would set up a donkey cart with backdrop for tourists. It was dated 1960, so I suppose I wasn't two years old. So the problem with the U.S. immigration policy towards Latin America is that there's this fundamental myth that the uh, policies are designed to quell the flow of immigration over the borders. Anybody who's spent any amount of time in the bordering states in California or Arizona or Texas, New Mexico, uh, would understand that these policies are designed basically to repress the uh, wages of the underclass workforce. Uh, and the economies of those areas are clearly dependent on that. Those, that so this I didn't see my dad till I was six and the only thing that I remember on the day when I saw him is that he slapped me hard in the face and if you think that's weird what's more weird uh, is the fact that to this day I, I don't even know for what reason he slapped me and I, I didn't dare to ask my dad um, what, what, 直到六岁才见到我的爸爸，当我见到我爸爸的那一天，嗯，我记得最清楚的一件事情就是他狠狠地扇了我一巴掌。如果你觉得那个呃事情很奇怪的话，更奇怪的事情是直到今天我都不知
Well, you know, the thing that, that strikes you in any paper plan is, is that there's a price to pay. You, sm you smell this area and you think there's a price to pay for all that, those leaves of paper that you get. It's, it's not a cost-free deal. And, uh, and, and so there's this, there's this part of it that uh, you, you, you get your nose into uh, to it and you think, uh, it's, it's, and, and it's quite different than getting your nose down into a book. So you get your nose in a good book, and uh, you know it's 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 an amazing thing. But you think about uh, uh, that. Uh, well, I don't know what I think, but you think you think all of this is done in secret. It's almost like the making of books is a secret activity here, and and we're standing here in front of this this fence. But this this pulp that makes books just sort of it seems to uh, is to the effect here that it sort of arises out of this cauldron. Uh, and so there's this really hideous uh, beauty here in this in this place. Reminds a lot of us that have been uh, in this piece of uh, Tarkovsky's Stalker. So we feel like we're in kind of a zone. The Student Residential School closed in 1978. It was one of the last in British Columbia to actually, there's an operating school. And what happened is like the band took over control. And way back when, we didn't know what to do with these buildings. And there's a, about five core people that decided, what are we gonna do? We wanted, we had all these different dreams. And we wanted our own. Fred Grinscrest, Evelyn Camille. Hello, my name is Evelyn Camille. I am Shushwap from Kamloops Indian Band. Whatever. Okay, uh, this, on this side was the girl side. The boys and girls were completely separated as you entered from into this building. And on that side is the boys side and right in the center is the chapel on which we spent considerable time was the learning the prayers of the Roman Catholic. I spent 10 years... Okay. I was about eight years old when I came here and I didn't know how to speak uh, English was tall. And my friend Sally was the one that helped me and tell me what the nuns were saying. And when the nuns caught me speaking our language, Shushwap, they'd pull, pull my hair or pull my ears. There's a whole bunch of us like that. And my hair was pretty, really long and they cut it like a Really short, eh? And I didn't know what was going on, and the things they gave us to eat was rotten, eh? When I was home, mom and dad used to give us decent, you know, good food and that, and I got here and I was asking my friend Sally how come they're giving us this uh, Rotten mush and uh, beans wasn't even washed. There's rocks in there and everything, and they made, a, made us eat it. Eh? And I got sick a few year, a few months after I got to school here. And I was in bed for most of the time I was here. Then I'd ask the nuns to give me some home, uh, school work, and they never gave me anything. They locked me upstairs. That was really bad. I was just so skinny, eh? 
and they'd give us clothes and we'd have to wear it for two weeks at a time, underclothes and top clothes, and they'd give us a cuddler boil and the big girls spill it on our clothes and we had uh, woolen sweaters and that cuddler oil We'd have to stand that smell for two weeks, see? Eh? That was really a torture place to be here. And I sure hate coming in here right now even. And so, uh, um, so we were sort of shooting with a BB gun, and, and, and it hit a, a sort of pole or something, and it ricocheted, and it hit one of the big windows. So, you know, you couldn't kind of miss it. And my parents got back and later on, and my father saw the hole, hole in the window, and he said, so where, where did, how did this get here, he said, to Glenn and Will, you know, where, where did this come from? And uh, we said, well, we, didn't, we don't know. I, we never noticed it and things like that. Oh, and now I remember another thing. There were, not only was there one hole, but there were two holes. That's the problem. It did, went through a window. Oh, it went through a screen and then hit a window. That's it. Okay. So he was able to measure the trajectory. The trajectory. And even, even compensate for the fact that it hit ricocheted off yeah. a hole. Well, in this case, now I'm remembering a little bit more because maybe it wasn't so much that it ricocheted, but that he had two holes, which means even more, which means we were shooting at, at the, the house. house. And so, uh, um, so we were... smoke kind of rising out of the, the kind of vacuum of where the trade centers were. And it, it, it smelled bad, you know what I mean? And you, you knew what you were at. And there was all, like always people filing past here. And, you know, I mean, definitely we're talking about an issue of, here of fire and fire, gotcha. a home being burned, you know, the, the idea of burning and things like that. So, like, one of the things that brings to mind is I remember, um, again, in this same place in Western Mass, one afternoon, my brother was just learning how to drive, and uh, he went off to the dump with my father, and I was, like, hanging out at home uh, and, you know, maybe taking a nap or something in my bedroom, and all of a sudden, the fire from, from the, uh, uh, the fire alarm from the town goes off. You know, and it's like a huge sound in the valley, and you can hear everything. I hear fire trucks and everything like that. And uh, so they didn't come back, you know, for a long time. Okay, so here's what had happened.
I mean, like, yeah, it's kind of, Rabat. yeah, it's kind of where you are at home. It's yeah, where you, where, where you come from, where you're, where you're knowing the people, where your tradition comes from, where you, I don't know, where you maybe um, spend your childhood, and especially where you feel comfortable. It's a mixture between being at home and feeling comfortable. Uh, 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 the Heimlich means like. Yeah it's, kind of, yeah, it's kind of where you are at home. It's yeah, where you, kind of where, where you come from, where you're, where you're knowing the people, where your tradition comes from, where you, I don't know, where you maybe um, spend your childhood. And especially where you feel comfortable. It's a mixture between being at home and feeling comfortable. Uh, 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 the Heimlich means like... And was it a house in the country? Was it? Was it? What was it like? Yeah, it's yeah. like uh, my childhood is like in a city called Punjab, Punjab, okay. Punjab State. Yeah. So that's a very beautiful city. That's a very beautiful place. In fact, I was I grew up in a colony, mm -hmm. and I really miss that colony because since that I may have grown up, we have moved to Delhi city, which is the capital. Yeah.